Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello there, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you for joining me again on the Pet Parenting Reset. Today, we're talking about garlic for dogs. And I actually recently did a post on Patreon about garlic. And normally when I do posts like that on Patreon, they are exclusive for Patreon. But because it is spring, (laughs) I wanted to put this information out to a broader audience and give you an idea of the kind of content that does go up on Patreon that, again, is normally exclusive to our Patreon supporters. If you are not already a Patreon supporter, you can go to the petparentingreset.com and click the very top navigation uh, menu. There is a link that just says Patreon, and you can join for as little as a dollar a month. It helps continue to bring content like this to pet parents like you as well as exclusive content that you get on Patreon and behind the scenes content that you get on Patreon. So it's a really great way to get more (laughs) of all the wonderful pet parenting content that I put out for you. So as a disclaimer, I want to say never, ever, ever, 100% never feed garlic to cats. Nope, don't do it. But garlic for dogs the risks versus the benefits. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So because it is spring and we're thinking about pest control, my first thought, of course, goes to Animalio. Y'all know by now that I am a huge, huge fan of Animalio essential oils. They are the only veterinary grade essential oils um, blended, created by Dr. Melissa Shelton. She selects all of the oils herself. She tests all of the oils herself. She creates the blends herself. She blends things on her. She, well, she has a team that helps her now, but this was, I mean, she's just an incredible, incredible human and to begin with, but then to bring these veterinary grade essential oils to people who need them, I'm just, I'm in awe of her, but That's where my first thought goes, specifically their Evict and Away blends. But I also think about garlic. And when you do a quick search about garlic, of course, you'll find many, many places all over the web telling you absolutely do not feed garlic to your dogs. In fact, many years ago, I said the same thing. Um, I just was talking to my husband last night and I said, it's that time we're going to be adding some garlic to Kim's food. Um, and I was going over the protocol with him, which I am going to talk about a little bit later on in this video. And he was like, wasn't that long ago you were telling me absolutely not. We couldn't feed garlic to, to our dogs. And I said, I know, but I learned and I I'm growing and I I'm open to knowledge. I don't, I don't close myself off to information. So here's to you not closing yourself off to information as well. (laughs) Um, so yeah. There are absolutely some instances where we should be cautious with garlic. And yes, we absolutely do not want to feed excessive amounts, even to a healthy dog. But garlic does have some incredible benefits when fed appropriately. So let's first talk about the risks. Garlic is lumped into the onion category. And while onions should never be fed, we know they're toxic. What we know about garlic is that in excess, and we're talking many, many heads of garlic per day, it can be quite dangerous for our dogs. There have been studies conducted that show garlic is toxic to dogs, but to be fair, those studies used garlic extract in very large quantities. And by very large quantities, we're talking feeding four full heads of garlic every day to a 75 pound dog. Like that is a ton of garlic. Who would do that? No, absolutely not. We don't want to do that. To me, that sounds like bias being put into a study, right? You can make anything look bad if you set out to make it look bad. 
that's my opinion. That's my viewpoint. I don't know who actually did that study. I don't know those people personally. I don't know who funded the study. That's really where you want to look for bias. Anyway, let's get back to what's going on here. We're talking about garlic. It's also advised to only feed fresh, raw, organic garlic. Never feed prepackaged, pre-chopped, or pre-shelled garlic. I will also never feed to your dog or to yourself garlic from China. Chinese garlic consistently tests positive for unsafe levels of arsenic, heavy metals, and chlorine. Plus, if you watched that Netflix documentary a few years ago on garlic, you'd be disgusted to know, to learn how they actually grow their garlic in China. So feed the freshest, most organic garlic possible for maximum benefit. When we get into the benefits of garlic in the next section, which we're going to talk about in just a minute, it's important to note that these benefits come from the active enzymes in the garlic, which are only created at the time the garlic clove is crushed or chopped and do not have an extended life, so they dissipate in a short period of time. When you purchase pre-chopped or pre-crushed garlic, these enzymes are no longer present, so it's pointless. Um, so here are some cautions for feeding garlic to dogs and these cautions, um, as well as the benefits and feeding guidelines I got from canine herbalist Rita Hogan, who is very well respected in the pet parenting community. Um, so pregnant or lactating dogs as with any other medication or supplement, you should always consult with your holistic veterinarian before giving garlic to pregnant dogs. Garlic can also change the taste of a dog's milk. So do not feed it to nursing mothers for that reason. Puppies. We should also be cautious of, according to Rita, don't give garlic to puppies under six months. Puppies eight weeks or less don't produce new red blood cells, so never give them garlic. For puppies aged six months to a year, you can be cautious and feed half the regular dose. Again, that's from uh, Rita Hogan, canine herbalist. There are also specific breeds of dogs, uh, such as Shiba Inus and Akitas, that can be more sensitive to the effects of garlic. So if you have these breeds, or if you are concerned about what your dog, their breed may be, um, go ahead and consult with your holistic veterinarian before starting any supplements for any dog, actually. <laughs> um, and then, yes, there actually are drug interactions. So garlic can interact with some drugs that your dog may be taking. Certain herbs and all pharmaceuticals can have drug interactions with just about anything, and garlic is not excluded. According to Rita, here are some common drugs that garlic is known to interact with. Immune suppressants, heart medications, chemotherapy drugs, blood thinners, insulin, antacids, and high blood pressure drugs. So if your dog is taking any of these medications or supplements, check with your holistic veterinarian before adding or removing anything from your dog's diet, not just garlic, which is what we're talking about today. Okay, so those are the risks. And if you and your dog do not fall into any of those categories, then here are the benefits of garlic for dogs. There are actually quite a few health benefits in addition to being a great flea and tick repellent. So garlic is known to prevent the formation of blood clots. Um, these actually are some of these, these really great benefits are some of the reasons that they are contraindicated with some prescription drugs. So they prevent form, they are known to prevent formation of blood clots decrease the buildup of cholesterol, widen blood vessels, help prevent tumor formation and fight cancer, stimulate the lymphatic system to aid in waste removal, and is a great antibiotic, antifungal, and antiparasitic. So hopefully none of these are applicable to your dog at the moment, but it is good to know, especially when you may be concerned for drug interactions as we just talked about. So let's get to what got me on like to create this post to begin with, to create the podcast. Well, as I said at the beginning, this was a Patreon post and I wanted to give everybody an idea of some of the content that goes up for our Patreon supporters. So you can get an idea of what you will be receiving when you join the Patreon family. So garlic as a flea and tick preventative, and that's what we are about to use this for, for our dog, Kim. In fact, she just a couple of weeks ago, had her annual checkup. Um, it, again, I did a Patreon post that covered 
everything we went through on our annual checkup, we had a veterinarian come to the house. Um, she did the checkup for Kim and all four of the cats. We did blood work. Um, Kim had her heartworm test done. She's negative. All the things. So I know that she is in good health and I am not concerned with any, of course, she's not taking any drugs, um, any prescription drugs or anything like that. So I know that there are no contraindications that I need to be concerned with. But again, it is always advised to make sure your dog is healthy enough and to discuss with your holistic veterinarian before adding or removing anything from their diet. So garlic um, as a flea and tick preventative, it takes a couple of weeks to build up in your dog's body, but it can help you take a bite out of flea and tick season, pun intended. <laughs> it is not necessary to feed garlic all year long unless you live in a climate where fleas and ticks are active all year long. Instead, you would only need to feed it for the warm months when fleas and ticks are most active. So garlic will build up in the oils of your dog's coat, which is what will act as a repellent for these nasty pests. So bathing your dog during this time should be done sparingly to avoid removing as much oil as possible. When you do bathe them, use a clean product like four legger and start the build up process again. As the season begins, you will want to feed your dog garlic every day for two weeks. Once the two weeks are up, only feed two days a week for maintenance. So how much should you feed? Uh, again, I turn to a canine herbalist Rita Hogan for the answer to this. Using a level measuring spoon, feed the following amount per day according to your dog's weight. Five pounds will get one sixth of a teaspoon. 10 pounds will get one third of a teaspoon. 15 pounds will get half a teaspoon. 20 pounds, two thirds of a teaspoon. 30 pounds, one teaspoon. This applies to freshly chopped garlic. Here's how to prepare the garlic. Mixing allen and allanase forms allicin, the active medicinal ingredient in garlic. This is why you want fresh chopped garlic. Peel the cloves, then mince, chop, or crush your fresh garlic and let it sit a couple of minutes before use. Allison degrades quickly, so use the garlic immediately after the sitting period for maximum benefit. I measure and chop up my garlic and set a timer for 10 minutes. Measure out the right amount of garlic for your dog's body weight and mix it into her food. So this is what I'm going to be doing with Kim this year. We moved to Texas, which is a climate known for heavy mosquitoes, fleas, ticks, all the pests. She's heartworm negative. We just had her tested. She's super healthy, has an incredibly healthy immune system. Um, and yeah, the, like I, I'm very confident that adding in the garlic, we did this a little bit last year. It worked wonders. We're doing it again this year. I'm, I don't feel let, uneasy at all about this because I've done my research and I hope that this, um, gives you, put your mind at ease with garlic a little bit as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. It wasn't too terribly long because again, I just want to give you an idea of the kind of content that goes up on our Patreon. And I do hope to see you over there. So go to the petparentingreset.com and the top navigation menu on the right hand side, click Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month to help continue to bring content like this to pet parents like you. With that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Give your pets some extra love from me. Until next time, bye guys. Oh, oh, oh.